Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to run the crystal plasticity code. Um, to do that, first thing is to download the software from GitHub. It's in um, Tarleton's group, um, and this is where I work actually. So if you go there, um, it's under crystal plasticity, it's open to public. So it's, you see some folders, but it's best to download the whole folder, it's easier. Um, let's open that up. Okay. Um, so it contains some folders, um, some subfolders, but today we're going to be interested in single crystal. So I will just focus on using the Fortran files. Um, so I'll just copy these Fortran files here. Um, they are under this UMAT. Um, folder and there's a version number associated with this folder um, so please use the latest one available okay so I go ahead and create a new folder and put all the Fortran files here now uh, I'll run the abacus now uh, you must have an Intel Fortran linked abacus um, and one way to check it is that at the initialization it will um, call uh, some libraries in, in Intel Fortran and Visual Studio. So make sure you have to have an Intel Fortran link for um, Abacus. Um, and uh, I start working by setting the working directory to the folder we created. Um, it's in desktop test. Okay, um, let's create a simple cube, a small one. And I start creating a rectangle, corner is the zero, zero, one by one. And it should be one again, so it's the cube there. So <clears throat> next thing is to create the material. Um, let's do that. Um, so uh, to, to use the UMAT, uh, the way we call, or the way Abacus calls the UMAT is this user material. It's so uh, we should we must choose this as our user material then it will call read the material information from umat so there are some mechanical constants here they're not necessarily mechanical constants but they are the some inputs that we can pass to umat so here there are some inputs um that we do so and they are listed in um in the readme file here uh, the, the most important ones there are six of them at least uh, first three are the bung angles, um, the fourth one is the grain ID, and fifth one is either a phase ID, like FCC, BCC, HCP, or a material number. Um, uh, and, and, and the final one is a flag telling that if we're going to use this material number with, from this user materials.f, or we're going to manually keep entering these parameters. So these parameters um, are the list of these parameters available under the documentation folder. There's an exile file called props. So if you look at these props, um, there's a detailed list to we, so that we can enter the material properties manually, like elastic constants and slip parameters and everything. But there are also um, uh, I don't usually, I, I wouldn't recommend it because it's possible to make mistakes here. So I would use this user materials.f and material number two. I'll show in a moment what it is. Um, let's do that. So the first three are the earlier angles. Let's use a cube orientation. So it's zero, zero, zero. And it's a single crystal. So grain ID, let's give it as one. And <clears throat> let's use material number two. And I'm going to use the user materials.f file. Now, uh, I will go ahead and show this user materials.f. So there are three files that start with use, the word user. These are um, these contain some user inputs. So user materials it contains the material data. So let's have a look at that. Um, so the material number two, as we choose, it's a, it's a custom material uh, which has an FCC type. So if I scroll down and look at case two, it contains some information about the material two, what it is. <coughs> uh, its phase ID is two, 
uh, which is a reserved number for FCC indeed. Um, and and slip low is slip model is three, which means it's a power law. These are these information are all in. Uh, you can find it in the documentation. Uh, in the documentation folder. Um, so like um, uh, the slip models, like slip model three is power low. Um, uh, sorry, this power low, and it's it it has this three inputs. Um, basically, if you don't have temperature dependence, this is zero, but you just have two inputs. So like the reference slip rate and the slip rate sensitivity exponent are the two inputs for the slip model. Uh, and and similarly for hardening and similarly for irradiation or other things. So you can find it all in this documentation. Um, like these parameters um, are now in our material parameters will be read from this user materials.f from material number two. Okay, let's go back. Um, now there are some standard abacus work like we have to create a section um, and we have to assign that section to that part. These are standard abacus things. Um, uh, we got to create an instance. Okay. Uh, uh, next, create a load, a static load. Uh, here, there's one important thing. Uh, in the UMAT, we use the deformation gradient as one of the inputs in our calculations. So even though your problem is a small strain problem, or it doesn't involve rotations or large deformations, we have to turn the nonlinear geometry on always. And uh, time period is time period, and, and it's it's good to start with a small step. And um, okay, um, maybe the next important thing is a mesh. Um, so I will try to create a small coarse mesh, uh, like eight by eight, eight element um, to um, okay, so this is like <coughs> two divisions per each direction. And uh, if you look, so there is a stand, if, if you choose the standard linear brick element, by default, Abacus sets it to reduced integration. But this element has one integration point, so it has some, um, it, ha it has to have some hourglass stiffness. Otherwise, you may hit into convergence problems. So it's best to not be used reduced integration for this case, the full integration. Um, and use it like that. So let's go ahead and <laughs> create um, uh, the boundary conditions. I will start from the initial one. I will just use a uniaxial case. I normally fix from the back side of it. Uh, um, it doesn't have to be. Um, so let's fix uh, surface normal to the x along x direction. And um, surface normal to the y along y, and surface normal to the z along z direction, and let's stretch it along x direction, give the displacement in the load step, and uh, make it 1% um, strain. Okay, um, okay, uh, so normally abacus outputs like stresses, forces, and other things, but if you want to output some other parameters, um, uh, there are also some other available parameters for crystal plasticity, like slip rates or um, lattice strains or uh, slip resistance. So uh, the way to trigger that is um, using state variables. So, um, in, again, in the material, we have to pick the depth wire option, and we have to provide a number of solution-dependent state variables. So I'm going to show you in a moment what it is. Um, so, again, we have the um, file starting with user. It's the user output. So let's have a look at that. Okay. Um, so... Uh, at the beginning of that file, there are some integer numbers, zeros and ones, basically. So these 
uh, defined output. So you could turn one or make if you make them as one, that means you want to output cumulative slip, and it's just one output. If you want to output like in this case, this is on. And by default, it's the like total slip per slip system, and there are um, twelve number of. In this case, we choose the FCC material, so that will be twelve number of outputs for this <coughs> case. Sorry. <clears throat> so um, we have to. Uh, one thing that we have to be careful is that we have to choose a number that's greater than twelve um, or equal to twelve. So I would just pick twenty. If it's less than twelve, then it will give an error message. Um, Okay, and the other thing that we have to do is just mention them in the field output request. So if we go to the state variable tab, there's this SDV, solution dependent state variable, we have to tick that to, to be able to visualize in the output. Okay, um, I think that's pretty much it. So then let's create the job. Then um, um, it's not mandatory, but uh, there is an out legend file that the UMAT generates. So to put it in the right place, I recommend this using the scratch directory as the same same as the working directory. So it's in desktop desktop tests, and um, here we have to tell the umat file that we're using, which is the umat.f in the same working directory, and it should be it. Um, and let's save this. Um, test, okay, and um, yeah, uh, run this basically. Okay. <laughs> in the meantime, I, I'm going to show you one more input file. That's the user inputs. This file contains some default inputs. Um, uh, uh, one of the imp one of them was this imp input file. No, normally, you must reads the IMP file and to to get the element type and the number of elements, but Sometimes in Linux systems, it cannot find this input file automatically, so you need to tell the folder location and the file name. If you don't want this to be on, then you can turn this off and just enter your default, like a number of elements here, like in this case it's 8, we have to write 8 here, and the element type is C3D8, we have to write at C3D8 here. There are several other numerical parameters. Uh, these are uh, helping, allowing the user to um, to have some leverage on, on tweaking some parameters in case convergence problems happen. Um, but one of the, if you have a size dependent problem or if you're interested in length scale dependence, then uh, there's a GND model, and I recommend using model three, four, or six. <coughs> um, we'll confine it later, but right now it's. Um, uh, under research, uh, we are working research right now. Uh, so uh, the other thing is um, m the software is designed to deal with multiple materials, so multiple phases. In the mesh, there could be two different phases, and they may have different number of subsystems. But we have to tell the code the maximum number of subsystems to allocate the arrays. So um, this number can be different. I mean. If you're using HCP and just watch for this, uh, it may cause some errors. Um, if you're, it should be consistent with the phase you're using or phase you're choosing. Um, yeah, and and the rest is um, quite standard. Okay, it's completed. Um, uh, we got some results. Um, uh, these are stresses, of course, it's uniaxial and symmetric orientation, so it's quite uniform. See, we got some state variable outputs. Um, there are some numbers for them, and those are listed in the same working directory. There's a legend file created. Um, you must create that file, and um, and each tells what state variable refers um, represents what. So, for instance, state variable one is the total slip on slip system one. So. <coughs> As we mentioned, there are twelve of them because we have FCC material. And the rest are zero. Basically, there's no no output for for these state variables. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, so um, uh, I will post this video in in this video tutorial link. I'll put the link here. And 
if you have any questions or if you have if you encounter any issues you may contact me from teams or you may um raise an issue uh here uh if you find some bugs or anything i would appreciate it um thank you so much and have a nice day